Automated tests are run continuously. They never stop. There's no test phase we enter. As soon as a product is being designed, we're already beginning automated test. It never stops. Where I'll take this presentation next is the manufacturing steps that allow the shop floor, the manufacturing floor, to accept new designs multiple times per day. I'll scroll all the way to the right side near the end of the course to what's called XM or extreme manufacturing. There are 11 extreme manufacturing practices. These practices rebuild the shop floor, the manufacturing environment to pull, to request new designs multiple times per day. I'll zoom in. Tonight and tomorrow morning, teams will practice playing these games to attempt to solve different problems in hardware manufacture with agility. Okay. A problem for manufacturing lines and production systems that prevents them from accepting new product designs faster than once a year in many cases, uh, significant design changes, is the large cost to change. The extreme manufacturing practice is optimized for change, not optimized for low cost, not even optimized for manufacture. Definitely don't optimize to minimize variance, which is a piece of Lean Six Sigma. Now, much of Lean Six Sigma works with this system, but the piece of Lean Six Sigma that is designed for Six Sigma is the opposite of this principle. That part is rethought. It is, it is rethought. And instead, we optimize for change. Optimization that emphasizes cost over speed results in lower cost than optimization that emphasizes speed. Example, if a supplier has an 18 month lead time and there's another supplier that costs twice as much but can deliver in five days, choosing the latter will pay for itself in terms of waiting, lack of validation due to long delivery times, delay costs, and low morale. Next problem, next problem statement, dependency order. We can't make a change here because it's dependent on other areas of the system. The solution here is what's called object-oriented modular architecture. Now, if we had another hour, I would like to show a lot of examples of that in cars and rockets and software, but I'll at least summarize it here for those of you who might be interested. Principle two, object-oriented and modular architecture. Managing complexity is a problem. The solution is to divide the project into modules that can be developed in parallel and to unit test the modules individually. Modules share a standard base interface, which is agreed upon before the design starts and built as a test fixture. So as we introduce a new design change, even daily, the first step to introduce a design change is to introduce a test fixture of the interface, that definition of ready and definition of done test that I showed earlier. That could be a human with a clipboard. It could be a bed of nails to test pins and connectivity and logic tests on circuit boards. It could be stress and strain robots. Uh, ideally, it's automated. And the reason to automate is for speed and repeatability, which is what we want in interface testing. Next waiting on third-party testing. Tesla is a car company. Most companies spend a year in homologation testing, which is why they only do it every two, three, five, or seven years in their minor model change or major model change cycle. Tesla does it every day. Why? The solution to reduce waiting on third-party testing is test-driven development. Test-driven development to provide the fastest, simplest, and leanest solution for a given test, you must start with a test to pass. This is to program robotic or simulated tests. You can do them manually, but these tests are your gating bottleneck. They determine your overall iteration speed for most manufacturing companies. So automating these tests is highly valuable if you can. That means robots, software, simulations, and um, physical validation robotically. Automated tests are run continuously. They never stop. There's no test phase we enter. 
as soon as a product is being designed, we're already beginning automated test. It never stops. We simply add products to an ever-growing farm of long-running endurance tests and certification tests. Uh, as new part drawings become available, the test and learn approach is recommended. So design is co-located with tests. They're definitely within three meters of physical testing for anyone doing design work for speed reasons. Another problem, one team waiting on another. Our team has a good idea, but they can't do it until another team gives them feedback or validates a piece. The solution is contract-first design. In contract-first approach, Development begins by defining the contract or interface to the product or service. The end result can be fully modeled by interface software and fully automated by software testing. That is because the interface, the interface at the input and output, the IO, the interface of the parts, fixes the parts in application and distortion. So we design the interface first, then we figure out how our part delivers the value it should value in terms of stress, strain, mechanical features, software features, heating, cooling, heat exchange. Uh, for those of you who are familiar, basically the interface is determined by what's the computational fluid dynamics and finite element analysis of the modules on either side of you. Uh, for more information on this, please contact Soljit and we'll conduct this course together. Five, big planning up front. We can't introduce this brilliant new idea or this cost savings or even adopt this new supplier because we need to replan. We need to replan the dependencies across the entire product. We solve this by iterating the design. Principle five, design iterations. If it takes more than a year, that's a long iteration cycle, a long release cycle, a long sprint. No two SpaceX rocket engines, for example, are alike. No two SpaceX rocket engines are the same because we iterate and, the define and refine the design, is what Elon Musk says. SpaceX makes a new rocket engine with a new design every one day now. That's because over more than 10 years, more and more automated tools have been added to complete these other XM practices automatically at design time. So while a new rocket engine is being designed, the relevant tests are being largely auto autonomously designed at the same time. SpaceX has developed a phenomenal software and hardware suite that automates more and more and more of these aspects, which is what reduces the length of these product cycles.